Hey everyone, first of all, let me wish you a happy new year. Welcome on 2023. Um, I also have here a Metco joining and cladding calendar for 2023. I still have around 10 of them left. If you want to have one, please drop me a line on LinkedIn, a private message best, and I will be happy and keen to send you one so you have something nice for your office. Uh, also, today I would like to present the final video of our interview with Peter Ampel. We're going to look on plasma spray technologies and also application examples. Hope it will be interesting for you. Looking for your comments, uh, reshares. Let's start. Peter, I'm yeah. kind of surrounded here with a lot of different guns and mm -hmm. I see there's a huge multiply variety of technology you can mm -hmm. use for thermal spray. Mm -hmm. But we are also located here in Switzerland at Erlecon Medco in Wollen. And I know that more than 40 years of experience of Erlecon Medco of Wollen is related to plasma spray technology. Yes, that's right. And this is one of our main products. Can yeah. you please give us a little yeah. bit of highlights? What is behind? Yeah, what is plasma spraying? Plasma spraying, first of all, it's my favorite process. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love plasma. This is my real nice process because why? Because with this process you can melt nearly everything. <laughs> the very big difference between the other process is the temperature. We can create here with a plasma process, that means, um, yeah, with plasma, we can create temperature up to 15, 16,000 degrees. And because of that, we can melt ceramics like alumina, zirconia oxide, chromium oxide. These are the typical coatings. We are doing the ceramic coatings. We heard from the HF process before carbide coatings. We heard from the flame spray process, arc spray process, metals and alloys. So I would say this is the, the right process for spraying oxide ceramic coatings. Uh, against wear also, against corrosion, against thermal conductivity, against uh, thermal thermal uh, barrier. All these uh, typical ceramics like zirconia oxide or chromium oxide, aluminum oxide, all the ceramics are sprayed with this gun. And I told it before, I love it because of this very powerful gun with this very high uh, temperature energy. So I see here two guns. Yep. What is the difference between them? This one is was the first generation. First generation you see a cross section of the original F4 gun which was developed in 1970. 1970 it was uh, developed by Snecma in uh, yeah, late 60s, 1960, 70 and it was foreseen for a, a, rocket, a rocket drive. And then the, uh, the founder of uh, the company here, Mr. Nussbaum, he could buy the patent. And then he said, with this uh, rocket drive, we can do a plasma gun. And then he started to develop this gun, uh, which is producing plasma. Yeah? You see it in the cross section, the, the, green, the green wires showing here the gas flow, the blue wires are showing here inside the water flow. And a long time was one of the best guns in the market. But then later on, we came to the point and said, oh, how can we improve the spray or application rate? As I told you, well, application rate to minimize uh, maintenance work. And then we came up with uh, this gun which we call it a cascaded gun technology. That means the, let's say the secret in a, plasma, in a plasma gun is how can I bring the arc inside under control? Because we have here also DC, like we're in the, in the arc spray system, we come in with, a, with DC from AC to DC, we need to have a power supply. We need a lot of power, so five, six, seven hundred amps comes in. And then we create here inside between the anode and the cathode, that is the nozzle, the cathode is the electrode inside, is the, the cathode. We create an arc. And then we let gas flow through the gun, which is mainly 95%, it's argon and hydrogen mixture. And then we ignite the gun, that means we ignite the gun, we bring a high frequency in, and then we create an arc inside, and then the gas flows through the arc. And the arc has a temperature about 59 centigrade, 59,000. And with this temperature, 
the gas, the argon, as well as the hydrogen gas, will be ionized and then we create the plasma. So plasma is nothing else than an ionized gas. And get the temperature, we get a uh, process temperature of about 15,000 and external we then can bring in the powder. Now we tell me the difference because with this cascaded gun technology we have between the cathode and the anode we have a neutral stack which is neutral and with this technology we can then pull or the, the gun uh, the arc will be pulled to the to the front and it's much, it's much longer and the length of the arc is proportional to the voltage we have and when we bring in a certain amount of amps and we can with the same amount of amps we have a high voltage then we have a higher power because power is amperage multiplied by the voltage and so we have higher power in order to melt the material so it's more efficient we have a higher application rate at the end that's the difference this cascaded gun technology compared with the conventional gun technology but both are plasma process Peter, what are the main applications where you see the benefits of plasma process? I mean, like you mentioned a couple of them, but what would you say is the main direction where the plasma technology nowadays is used in industry? Mainly, it's used for oxide ceramic coatings. That means all these cooking pans are sprayed with alumina. Alumina mixed with titanium oxide because it's the cheapest plasma coating you can do is, alumina, is an alumina titanium coating so all cooking pans if you have dry wear cooking pans or also some rolls somewhere then uh, dry wear we are using this alumina mixed with titanium because it's the cheapest powder you can buy so this is a uh, i understand a zirconia oxide exactly so this is one of the main applications for thermal bayer when we talk about aero engine components and primary turbine blades yep so next time you fly you can look on the engine of your plane and realize that the two bind plates which rotate there with extremely high speed are all protected with an early con coating on them or the with a plasma gun technology having a tbc coating yeah. is it correct yeah the, it's not the compressor part it's, it's the, the back part after the burner after the burner and the burner can it the burner can itself also the front is mainly protected with m crowley that means it's uh, against hot gas corrosion. But you know the, the thermal, the thermal attack you have at the burner can, and just behind the burner can it's very hot. Then these parts are protected with uh, first also with a, it's a it's a system coating system. First we spray the Crowley on it. That's a coating. It's a co uh, cobalt based or nickel based coating against hot gas corrosion. And then on this. Uh, on this uh, uh, nicrally or cochrally, also amcrally, we spray it in this thermal barrier coating, which is also a beautiful application. And this is, as I understand, also a chromium oxide. This is chromium oxide. For, the, for a, this is a, a, um, it's in the textile industry, a roll or where, where a band is going around. It's a typical wear application for some rolls, textile industry, printing industry, also here, for example. This is, uh, this is now an, an alumina chip where, for example, an, an roll where the, the, the fill will go around. We can have instead wear textile or other applications uh, sprayed with plasma process. I mean, like, if we go to one of your press examples, cooking pans, yep. I know that you all have also a lot of Teflon coatings. Yep. And uh, my girlfriend always starts a discussion with me saying that the Teflon coatings are not healthy. They can cause some damages on the long term to your health. I don't know if it's uh, correctly like that or not. But the question is, do you see any negative uh, effects of uh, aluminum oxide coating with thermal spray on your cooking pan? No, not at all. No, no but yours, you know, they are first. That, that's, that's correct. When we talk about the Teflon cooking pan, the first you spray alumina against wear and then the, the sealing process is in the Teflon. We, we, we seal then the, the, the alumina coating with Teflon. So if you talk about the Teflon cooking pan, basically the, the base, the, let's say the, the bond material is alumina and then Teflon on Always. it. Always. So just a provocate question. If we go to some shop like IKEA, yeah. We have a lot of cooking pans. Mm -hmm. Can everybody share that there is an aluminum oxide coating and probably a Teflon coating on top? 
Yeah, you can see that at the price of the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And further technology will be the medical technology where we spray all the implants. We have some implants here. Where we spray titanium first. Because the titanium must be completely oxide free. And for that we go with the plasma process in controlled atmosphere. We call it cham pro, chamber process. We go in a chamber, we pump down, make the chamber free of oxygen, we purge with argon, and then in an argon atmosphere we spray with the plasma process on the slightly under pressure, 70, 80, 50 millibar, titanium, pure titanium on this uh, Implants. It's not only hip joints, also knee joints, and, and all the uh, all the prothesis will be sprayed more or less with the plasma technology uh, in controlled atmosphere. Wow. So basically, this is, I guess, a hip joint. Yep. So if somebody has changed their hip joints or planning to do this, they can be sure that there is also a titanium coating with a sample spray, which can increase the lifetime and have a reliability with your skeleton and bones. Yeah, we talk about uh, pro. Uh, we talk about uh, bioactive or bio uh, biocompatible or bioactive coating. That means we can spray with uh, we can spray titanium first on it, which is a bioactive coating or a biocompatible coating, and then on this titanium coating we spray, but no more in controlled atmosphere in the environment atmosphere, a hydroxylapatite on it, also with plasma which motivates then the tissue to grow together because the big issue was here when you do a hip joint i remember when i was a child always say, wait 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 if you need a new hip joint wait wait because otherwise you need a second one because the big issue was if you put it in the bone and then you have the ball here after a certain while it starts to lose if it's not coated and then you have to do a new one but with the, with the coating here, you create here a coating function. The coating function, hydroxylapatite, will then motivate the bone to grow into the coating. And then it's fixed. It's not cemented. It's fixed. And by the way, I have two of them already implanted. Also with a thermal spray coating? <laughs> yes, so plasma coated. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I mean, again, playing tennis. <laughs> can play tennis, can go not for each stop ball. I cannot jump in each, uh, to, to run to each stop ball, but no problem, I can go for running no more than 10 kilometers, kilometers, but still running and uh, bicycle, fantastic. That's because of the plasma technology. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very great example how the technology can be used. Peter, um, next question to yeah. you. We've seen a lot of guns and technologies which are already established on the market. What do you believe will be a next step for the thermal spray technology? Do you see any na another gun developments which will come up to market? Yeah, you know, as I, I told you before, my heart is beating for the plasma technology, you know, and uh, I think uh, the development will go in a, in a more even uh, increased efficiency. That means uh, we, uh, I think we should try, and uh, we are also now working on that, uh, to, to get the arc under control. That means a very long arc. That means, I told it before, a higher voltage, high performance of the gun, a high spray rate. Uh, but the future will show us also that we have to rethink in this technology. We should come to the question as good as needed, not as good as possible. Here uh, we can also uh, go a step forward uh, because we come from uh, our technology grew up in the aircraft industry. We came there, and uh, that's for sure. The, 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 the aircraft industry they have to specify the coating, so all this uh, porosity in the coating, cracks, stresses, all these things. But there are a huge market around. They want to have a coating against wear protection, against uh, against corrosion, uh, thermal barrier, and they're not so, let's say, interested in the specification. It, it has to last a certain time, and then it's okay, and then. The big advantage of all this uh, thermal spray technology is all that we can uh, strip the coating. That means we can uh, we can uh, jump into the repair business because in the thermal spray business you have the bonding, is a mechanical bonding. That means that we can remove the coating again and spray it again for repair. 
Uh, that is one thing I see a big advantage and then in the uh, to save our environment to come up uh, with solutions where we can uh, improve let's say the, uh, the the CO2 the NOx values in the engines all these things in the, uh, uh, can also be a big step forward when we go in this direction to to yeah to protect our environment so our nature Peter, I understand we have some challenges on the technology, improving the gun performance, yep. improving the control of plasma. But uh, I believe also a very important topic would be a new generation materials, mm -hmm. where probably we will right. have another interview just focused what type of materials are used, how they used, how they protected. And I'm very excited and curious to work in that direction together with Peter and a couple of another experts. Mm -hmm. Peter, uh, at the end, first of all, thank you very much for your time. Explaining me and honestly, I learned a lot during this interview about the processes. I still remember when I as a young uh, guy came to company around eight years ago and had the first uh, introduction training with you. Still great memories. Thank you very much. What would you wish uh, to tell people uh, around uh, the globe about the technology and what, what, what is the main takeaway for you being so many years with the technology? I would say think about can you repair the part not only throw it away can you repair it and then perhaps the thermal spray process can uh, improve or let's say increase the lifetime of uh, your component not okay. only throw away repair it or spray it with plasma process <laughs> <laughs> no all the other processes process. uh, all yeah. the other processes um, at the end of the day if you're a customer of Erlecon or you plan to be involved in the summer spray technology, feel free to contact Peter. I will leave his LinkedIn uh, information. Yep. And he's really one of the great experts, as you can oh. see, and giving very good fundamental trainings, helping you to understand the processes and get a deep dive in the technology. Thank you very much, Peter. I thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Really. And uh, all the best. <laughs>